Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is AP Physics Essentials video 13. It's on wave particle duality. And before we talk about that, we should identify what a particle is and what a wave is. They're both ways that we can transfer energy from one point to another. And so they both would allow me to knock this can over. Let me use a cannonball first. And so that's a particle. I'm transferring energy through a particle from point A to point B. The cannonball is going from one point to another and I've knocked the can off. Now how else could I knock it off using a wave? Well you see that there's a chain here. I could add energy to it at one side that would create a wave that would knock the can off. Now you can see the chain's not moving that the wave continues to move back and forth. It's transferring energy through the medium. And so objects can either be particles, like a baseball, or they can be waves, like sound waves. You're listening to sound waves right now, coming from the speaker on your computer or the speaker in your headphones. How did it get there? Well, I vibrated the air, my microphone picked up on that, and then your speaker's vibrating the air. But it's not like sound is moving from me to you, it's just vibrating the air. And so what scientists have found is that there's this duality. Particles act like waves and waves act like particles. And in this video we're going to talk about how particles have wave properties. And this was first seen in the double slit experiment, which is kind of counterintuitive, but it'll show you what's going on in the world of the very small, the world of quantum mechanics. And so let's set this double slit experiment up. What we have are two slits on this side. And what we're going to do is shoot particles at it. So you can imagine that we're shooting baseballs or bullets or marbles or even spray paint that we're going through those two slits. And so what do you think will happen? Well, those particles are going to move through those slits and they're going to hit some kind of a screen. Now what do you think it's going to look like on that screen if I turn it so you can see it? Well, you probably guessed this. In other words, the particles are not all moving in a straight line, but they're moving through the slit, they're hitting this screen, and then we're seeing that if we turn it sideways. And so what do you think happens if we were to close up one of these? Well, the particles aren't going to make their way through. If we close this one, what's going to happen? The particles aren't going to make it through there as well. And so if we remove both, then we're back to where we started. So you shouldn't have learned anything new. This is how the world works. Now let's say we're using waves now. And so imagine instead of shooting spray paint through these slits, we've now got a wave tank where we're generating waves on the left side. Those waves are moving through the two slits. And then we have detectors on the screen that are showing us how, what's the amplitude of those waves, how much energy is being transferred through. So if we kind of simulate that, it's going to look like this. And so what we're seeing is interference. You can see that as those waves move through, we are increasing the waves in some places, decreasing the waves in some places. And what you see is an interference pattern that would look like this. Because those are moving as waves, they can interfere with each other, and so you don't have two discrete units. That's how waves look in a double slit experiment. And so then scientists said, well, let's look at something very, very small. Let's look at an electron, which we tend to think of as being a particle. And so let's shoot particles through this double slit experiment and see what we see on the other side. So you might imagine they're going to move through. If we turn it toward you, you might think it would look just like those marbles or that spray paint did, but what you see is an interference pattern. So we see these things that we think of as particles, and they're starting to act as waves. They're interfering with one another. And so scientists thought, well, maybe they're all going every which way, and so they're interfering with each other. What if we just shoot them one at a time? So let's just shoot a few electrons at a time. And what they find is that as they do that over minutes, and minutes, and then hours, and then hours, what's happening is this interference pattern starts to emerge. And so this is crazy to scientists. So what's going on? Are they somehow interfering with other electrons in the future or in the past? Are they somehow dividing in half and then interfering with each other, those two, um, that, those two parts of that electron? And so scientists want to test that. So what they do is they observe it. In other words, they put uh, flashes of light that are uh, going to be released when they incident with a electron and they see what happens then to see you know which which one of these holes is the electron going through and as they start to observe it something even weirder happens it goes back to acting like a particle again and so again what is this showing us that these particles that we think of as discrete little units are actually behaving like waves and it opens up this world of quantum mechanics and so you could do this if you wanted to um, this works with uh, any kind of a light source like a laser light source where it's moving in one coherent plane 
And so what you could do is just shine a laser through these two slits. You could do this in a physics classroom. And what you'll get is this diffraction pattern on the other side. It's something that we can observe, but it's being created at the quantum level. And what do I mean by that? Well, we live in the world of classical mechanics. We live in a world where everything travels much less than the speed of light and things are much larger than the size of an atom and so we live in this world of classic me classical mechanics that's what mostly you're going to learn in physics one and two but know this that as things get really really fast we have to adjust and use relativistic mechanics and as things get really really small we have to use quantum mechanics and so the double slit experiment doesn't work in our classical classical mechanics world um, but it does work in the world of the very very small and so did you learn this how classical particles like electrons and photons can have wave-like properties I hope so and I hope that was helpful